Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Dallas. On this video I'm going to talk about uh, the 30, 60, 90 special right triangles. Notice this says part 3. Part 1 uh, covered the basics behind the 45, 45, 90 and the 30, 60, 90. Part 2 covered 40, 60, 90 and then this is part 3. Now when I say 30, 60, 90 special right triangles, remember I'm talking about the angle measures. Every 30, 60, 90 triangle has a 30 degree angle, 60 degree angle, and a 90 degree angle. That's why it's called a 30, 60, 90 triangle. If you come across a triangle that does not have a 30, 60, and 90 triangle, all three of these at once, then you can't do what I'm talking about in today's lesson. Uh, now, again, I skipped a couple basic things uh, on the very first uh, video when I talked about the 30, 60, 90 triangle that I need to mention here. Uh, keep in mind that, again, you should already know that opposite the 90 degree angle is the hypotenuse on a right triangle. So every single time we have a right triangle, the longest side is always the hypotenuse. And then the other two sides are called legs. Now, but on a 30, 60, 90 triangle, uh, I'm going to call these legs something else. Uh, opposite the 30 degree angle, I'm going to label this guy the short leg. Opposite the 60 degree angle, I'm going to label this leg the long leg. The short leg is always opposite the smallest angle. The long leg is always opposite the 60 degree angle. And so if I say, hey, I'm giving the short leg here, you, you need to know what I'm talking about. Again, this is the short leg because it's opposite the smallest angle. This is the long leg because it's opposite of an angle bigger than 30. Now, the longest side is still the hypotenuse. So the, the, the long leg is opposite the middle angle of the three. And so I just want to mention that here. And then also remember, that there's a special angle side ratio between all the sides and angles. And so these are the angle measures, these are the side measures. So opposite the 30 degree angle, we're always going to label it x. Opposite the 60 degree angle, we're always going to label it x squared root 3. And opposite the 90 degree angle, we're always going to label 2x. Now keep in mind here that x is just a side length. So if I said x was, I'm coming up with a random number here, x was 19 for example, if I knew x was 19, then this side length is 19 because that's what x is. x is 19. The long leg, well, x is 19. The long leg becomes 19 square root 3. And so this is the length of the long leg. Now the short leg and the, and the hypotenuse have a special relationship between these two sides. I can always double the short leg. So I'm doubling the short leg, and that gets you the length of the hypotenuse. So that's very nice to know. Whatever the short leg is, I can double that length that will give me the hypotenuse. That's why it says 2 times x. The short leg is x, the hypotenuse is 2 times x. So whatever the short leg is, all I need to do is double it to get to the hypotenuse, which is very nice. Now, we're going to move on to uh, some problems here. It says, uh, find the length of the missing sides. Which side are we given? We're given the side opposite the 30. This is the short leg. This is what we're given here. So we need to find the long leg and the hypotenuse. Now, I like to uh, solve these problems uh, using steps. Step one, it says label sides opposite the angles. So opposite the 30 degree angle, I'm going to label an x. Opposite the 60 degree angle, I'm going to label an x square root 3. Opposite the 90 degree angle, I'm going to label 2x. So I've labeled the sides opposite the angles. Now let's solve for x. Well, this side is equal to x. It's also equal to 12, so these guys, since they're equal, like since they're the same thing, 12 represents this side length, x represents this side length, I can set these two things equal to each other, and I've actually found x. In this case, x is 12. So if I keep using that information here, I know x is 12, this x becomes a 12. So this side length here for the long leg is 12 square root 3. And again, this is an acceptable answer here. I can Plug this in my calculator and make it a decimal if I want to, but your teacher should be fine with 12 square root 3 here. This is an acceptable answer for this side. Now, I know x is 12, so this is now 2 times 12, and so this side length is now 24. So the hypotenuse is 24, long leg is 12 square root 3, so I found the missing sides. I would call this one probably one of the easier problems when it comes to 30, 60, 90 problems. This next one here, example 2, I would say this is like a medium level problem. Uh, and you'll see why I say that in a moment here. Uh, so find the length of the missing sides. Which side am I given here? Opposite the, uh, sorry, opposite the 60 degree angle, we're given the long leg. So we need to find the length of the short leg and the length of the hypotenuse, and then we'll be done here. 
So uh, I just want you to, again, understand, get used to the long leg, short leg, get used to those words. So step one, label sides opposite angles. What am I going to label opposite the 60 here? Opposite the 60, this guy is equal to x square root 3. And I, can, I went out in a weird order here. I'm sorry. I probably should have started with a 30 here. Opposite the 30, I'm going to label x. Opposite the 60 is x square root 3. Opposite the 90, I'm going to label as 2x. And so right now, step one's done. Step two says solve for x. Do I know x right off the bat? Sort of I do. Sort of I don't. This side length is equal to 9 square root 3. This side length is also equal to x square root 3. So I can essentially set these guys equal to each other. So it's equal to 9 square root 3. It's also equal to x square root 3. Since they're equal, I can set them equal. And so my goal here is to solve for x. Well, what do I need to do here? Well, I need to cancel out the square root of 3. And how do I do that? I divide by the square root of 3. And so since I'm dividing by the square root of 3 to get x by itself, these guys will simplify out and cancel out. Any number divided by itself is that number. So if I just had a 3 divided by 3, that will cancel out, right? And that'll kind of equal a 1 here, but we don't need to worry about that 1. When I divide by the uh, square root of 3 by itself, it'll cancel out. When I divide by the square root of 3 by itself, it'll cancel out. And so in this problem here, we have 9 as x. So I have now solved for x. x is 9. So what else is x? Well, the short leg is x. So this guy is 9. So this is 9. The long leg is 9 square root of 3. And then this is 2 times 9, because x is 9, and this length is 18. This is ex first example problem. I gave you this first, and we needed to go backwards. And notice, this is 12, 12 square root 3, and 24. This is 9, 9 square root 3, and 18. It's the same kind of problem. I just kind of gave you a little bit different approach to the problem. Now, example 2 is a medium level problem, because there's a little bit of algebra involved. Example 3 is I would call a hard problem. Now, this is the same triangle as example 2, except for I'm not giving you 9 square root 3 for the long leg. I'm giving you 9 for the long leg. This is the long leg here. Remember, opposite the 60 is the long leg. This is a hard problem here. There's a little bit of math here that's going to might confuse you. And so you might need to go to additional videos to see the, how to solve this problem. Step 1, label sides opposite the angles. So I'm going to label. Uh, opposite the 30 here, I'm going to label x. Opposite the 60, uh, I'm going to label uh, x square root 3. Opposite the 90, I'm going to label 2x. And so on this problem, I'm solving for x and I'm solving for 2x, or I'm finding the short leg and I'm finding the hypotenuse. Now, step one's done. Step two, solve for x. I don't really know this right now. I know this length is equal to 9. I also know this length is equal to x square root 3. So I can set these equal. 9 equals x square root 3. This is a little trickier than what I just did. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to divide by the square root of 3 here. And you will cancel out the right side. These guys will cancel out. But on the left side, I'm left with 9 square root 3 equals x. In math, mathematicians, they don't like to see radicals on the bottom. The square root of any number is a radical. This is a radical. I don't like radicals on the bottom. The trick to this problem is, is I need to multiply this 9 divided by the square root of 3 by the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 3. If I take a number, square root of 3, and divide it by the square root of 3, this essentially is the same thing as 1. So if you plug in your calculator, square root of 3 divided by the square root of 3, you're going to get 1. In essence here, I am multiplying this fraction by 1. And I don't like how it's so squished up. Let me kind of make a little bit more space here. So originally, this was 9 divided by 3 equals x. But if I multiply this left side by the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 3, it's going to end up simplifying the problem. And that's going to help me solve this and uh, get the answer that I need. So again, remember, this guy right here is essentially 1. Anything times 1 doesn't change the equation. So this isn't really changing the equation. It's going to help me simplify the problem. So when I multiply fractions, I multiply the denominators together. These guys are going to stay the same. This is 9 square root 3. Now these two, square root of 3 times the square root of 3, that becomes the whole number 3. Whenever you're multiplying two radicals, and they happen to have the same number under the radical, it becomes just that number. And so I get that number 3. Again, plug in your calculator, square root of 3 times the square root of 3, you're going to get 3. 
Now I'm not quite done here. Nine, oh sorry, and all this equals x. Let me get this guy out of the way. He's in the way right now. So I need to solve this one more step. Can I divide nine by three? Yes, I can. Nine divided by three becomes three. We still have to keep the square root of three in here. And so x, oops, I goofed up. I got ahead of myself. So three square root of three is equal to x. This is what x is equal to. x is equal to three square root three. And since I know this guy is x, this is now equal to three square root three. So this is the short leg. The long leg is two times x, which is two times three square root three. Whenever I multiply, uh, so I'm only going to multiply two by the three here. So two times three is six. The radical just stays off to the side because we don't multiply whole numbers in radicals. This becomes six square root three. If you plug in your calculator three square root three and you multiply it by two, you will get the equivalent of six square root three. So if you're ever given a whole number for the long leg, there's a lot of math you gotta do here. And I don't have videos on this right now. You need to go ask your teacher, ask somebody else, Google or go to YouTube and type in um, simplifying radicals and they might explain how to do this. I'm not quite done here though. There's one more very simple problem here. I'm gonna call this guy basically an easy level problem. This is the last kind of way you're gonna see the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So find the length of the missing sides. So again, right now I'm given the hypotenuse. I don't know the short side and I don't know, sorry, the short leg, and I don't know the long leg. So I'm missing uh, the short leg and the long leg here. Step one, label sides opposite angles. So opposite the 30 is x, opposite the 60 is x square root three, opposite the 90 is two x. So I've labeled the sides opposite the angles. Solve for x. So solve for x. Right now, I know the hypotenuse is 45, I also know that it's equal to 2x. So this is my uh, equation here. My equation is 2x equals 45. In other words, I don't know what x is right now, but I do need to solve for x. But the math here is pretty simple. I just need to divide by 2 here, and what's half of 45? Well, that's 22.5. So x is, x is equal to 22.5. So since this is x, this is now 22.5. And we know x is 22.5, and the long leg here is 22.5 square root 3, and that is my answer here. And so this one's an easy problem because you're given the hypotenuse. Remember, the short leg is double the hypotenuse. Sorry, the hypotenuse is, is double the short leg. So if I can chop the hypotenuse in half, that gives me the short leg. The short leg times the square root of 3 gives me the long leg. Hopefully this video wasn't too long, and hopefully this is helpful to you. I will add additional videos for special right triangles for later on, but this is what I have for right now. Have a good day. Bye-bye.